um, you know, I would be mentioning uh, uh, in our in our chat uh, over and over certain uh, concepts that I think are at the base of trying to be successful or having an extra opportunity to succeed. And I already told you about curiosity. I already told you about challenge. Another thing is communication. So I think you are looking, you're looking to coaches in first place, understanding what type of communication you can generate, what type of communication you can develop in the interest of your own club. You know, it's not an, it's not a personal interest. And um, I think, uh, you know, the type of communication that you establish with your own coach is at the base of, of everything. And um, I would give you the example of someone like uh, Zerko Bradovic. We, at the end of the day, we, we worked together almost 10 years. And uh, he's, prob he's probably he's the greatest coach in international basketball. And uh, there was not one day that uh, it started without an opportunity to communicate without me stopping by his office or him coming to my office and talk about something, evaluate something. Um, that was, uh, or me going to the practice site and sit down and he would always find a timeout to share. So the sharing part is critical in order to be successful. And that's what you're probably trying to figure out when you approach or evaluate a new coach. It's not only how, how he thinks in terms of X and O's, but also how he can communicate, how you feel like you can relate to him. Then of course you have uh, other needs and the needs are in line with your specifically, with your, uh, uh, with the reality that you are managing. So the, the size of your budget, the type of players that you have under contract, what the coach eventually think, thinks in terms of how he wants to play the game. If that you think it fits your, you know, picture, uh, how your, your thinking evolves through the next one, two, three season, if that goes in line with the coach's thinking. Um, quite frankly, I try to follow the coaches the, the same way I follow the players. I mean, I used to, because now I'm, a, let's say, I'm in a different position. But, uh, but uh, I always kind of follow, follow them through their careers the same way that I follow the players. I always like to follow their... Uh, media statements, how they think, how they react, or sometimes I even went to coaches clinic because again, another concept, there is always something that you can learn every day from every angle in any situation of this business, whether it's uh, technical stuff or marketing or ticketing or social media. So I even, you know, I like to go and listen to coaches or to follow them uh, on their, uh, let's say, video stuff, just to, to get a feel of the, co of the coaches. Uh, I can share a, a story. Uh, when, we, when we selected uh, to go for Obradovic and uh, the CEO of our company in Treviso, Benetton, said, uh, uh, he looks like... Uh, you know, uh, he looks like a very, very aggressive, uh, you know, strange uh, kind, because, you, you know, uh, I don't know him. I need to have a feeling. I said, hey, hey uh, let's go. Come with me. We're going to go and watch a game of him. I think it was, uh, they were playing a game in Paris. So we flew to Paris and we, you know, we tried to hide somewhere in, in, in the gym just to give my CEO the opportunity to watch the coach in action. And of course, coach didn't know that we were going, you know, it was a, it was a secret, secret mission of scouting. And uh, as soon as the game was over, the CEO said, no, oh, he's our guy. I like him. I like how he relates to, with players. I like, now let's try to connect. 
and, uh, and, and try to finalize the deal. And I remember, we, I can't remember where, but we connected and, uh, and at the end of a great conversation, the guy, uh, the guy asked me, so Mauricio, I mean the guy, Jerko asked me, are you, you know, what are we? Are you okay with, uh, with uh, everything we discussed? I said, Jerko, if, if you're okay, you are our coach. And he goes, I'm okay, let's shake hands. And we shook hands and, and the CEO who attended the dinner said, but are we gonna sign anything? And, and, and Jerko looked at him and said, hey, I gave, I gave Mauricio my hand, what else do you wanna sign? And then uh, we ended up signing the contract, you know, after he got to Treviso for, you know, with the start of the season, but there was no need to sign because he had shaken my hand and that was, that was the deal. So again, um, you look for the, you not only look for X and O's, you look for the, uh, for what you think is the relationship you can establish, the understanding by the coach of the picture you're in and the goals of your organization and the level of your organization, because, uh, coach needs to be comfortable with the picture that is going to end up eventually working in. And, and that is very, very, very important. So the communication is just right down my alley as, as the listeners know, but in, in that regard, when you are constantly communicating, constantly uh, debating, arguing, um, just exchanging information, opinions on a, on a daily basis, how many times is there, or like, there's moments where you have to agree to disagree, right? There's not, it's not always going to match. What are the situations or the, the points that you leave to the coach? And what are the situations that you tell the coach to leave it up to you where that's, there's a clear separation of, of decision-making power? Well, I, I'm using a term that has been used uh, in many, uh, let's say, uh, Euroleague discussions lately, but... No, I think um, uh, you have to hope, you have to wish to go by consensus in the sense that um, because of what I just told you, you, if you made a good analysis, your way of thinking should be fairly similar in the sense that uh, uh, the two minds should be evaluating the picture in a very similar, similar, similar way. But that doesn't mean that, uh, uh, you know, at the end of the day, the decision cannot be seen from two different angles. Um, I think uh, that from my side, um, I need to underline the the priority of respecting numbers. So uh, respecting the budget is a priority. Respecting, you know, how much we can invest in any sort of operation is, is a priority. And uh, on the other side, uh, the technical side, of course, is uh, is coaches' field. You know, is his kid is kingdom. So I, I think uh, it's, it's important that um, if the budget is not affected, coach feels like he has more of a decision making, uh, let's say, power, because of course, he says, Okay, I stay within this, this is my you know, I want to go for this player instead of this other player. Um, I like the fact that um, if, to have a coach that anyway, even knowing this sort of, uh, let's call it decision-making power, if within your box of your budget box, uh, gives you the opportunity to understand your thinking process. So it's not one of, you know, one of those situations where I am the coach, you know, forget about your opinion. 
I am the coach, I decide this. If this is the approach, then uh, let's say the path together can be a, strug a struggling one. Again, I, I, I used the example of Obradovic before. Every decision was always discussed, shared, and, um, and he would always listen to my point of view. And, and, but again, uh, let's say he was going his way or sometimes he would say, hey, you know what? You are right, let's, let's take this approach. I mean, the sharing, communication and sharing. The sharing was always uh, at the base of every decision. Then of course, uh, uh, I felt I was always a part of this decision, decision making process. And uh, I think that's, that's what you have to feel to, to, to be part of this decision making process, understanding that if within your budget limitation uh, and you know, he is the coach. So he needs to put together the car that he needs to drive afterwards. So he's your pilot, you know, he's your, you know, he's your driver. So you cannot put him in a situation that he doesn't feel comfortable with the car that is put together. That is the, the philosophical, let's say, approach. So I think, uh, uh, I think that has changed through the years, going back 40 years ago. 40 years ago, it was more the approach of, hey, we are the club, we put together this team and you coach it. Now it's, now it's different. Coach, coach has to... I like the idea of coaches knowing the numbers, knowing the budgets, understanding what we can do and what we cannot do. And uh, because again, uh, Today is, a, you know, it's a different approach, and they need to understand the issues that we have to solve uh, in order to manage the situation at best. You know, so it it all both comes down back to communication because of the like the the juggling back and forth. It leads to clarity, right? It's like a filter. You you continuous continuously filter information and filter opinion until it's so clear that you both have no choice but to agree on a certain thing or, or completely throw it away and both agree to, to, to just yeah, uh, well, that's, a, that's That's the most important thing. I mean, I, I can recall uh, hours and hours with every, every coach I had. Hours, I mean, put together, not, not at once, but through. I remember when I had a clinic, uh, in uh, in Vegas for the American Coaches Association, and one year, and and I talked about the topic of communication and sharing with the coaches, and I was telling them, hey, I had Mike D'Antoni for four years as a coach, and Mike will, at the end of the day, will be probably be remembered as one of the coaches who changed the game with his way of playing it, you know. And, but Mike, when, when he started our career out of Milano with us in Treviso, was a, was a struggling coach coming out of a, of a, of a Milan job with, uh, let's say, with still doubts if he could turn into a successful coach. And he had uh, afterwards an amazing uh, NBA career. But I told him that those years that I spent together with him, every morning, he, would, uh, he was a very methodical person. He would stop by, you know, Treviso, as you know, is a very, very small place. He would stop by the train station, by the only copy of USA Today, uh, get to one bar place where, you know, he would get there and start doing his crossword puzzle. I would come from home. He would have his cappuccino. I would have my espresso. And we, you know, we would start talking basketball. And that was the start of our day. And every day, because that was the need of sharing. Obradovic had different habits, at least in Treviso. Obradovic, we went out after practice at night to a place in front of the arena. And we had uh, French fries big olives and beer and talk basketball for two, three hours to the point that my wife was coming and said, 
was calling and saying, hey, where are you? Because you disappeared. No, we are here in front of the gym, just talking basketball. But and with David, we had long, long talks. I mean, talking, sharing, discussing basketball is, is fundamental to, to, for all the decision and, that you have to make and, 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 how, and for you to manage uh, you know, a, a basketball club. Yeah, I think, I think the key component on that is um, to be able to have the ability to be rational and not to be afraid to change your opinion on things, to be a flip-flopper to an extent, but not, not to be married to an idea, but be open to having your opinion changed by somebody else and not be stubborn on something that you think and you believe in, but you, you don't allow any other arguments to change your mind. I think it's a key component on find, finding the right solution. I think it's very important that a coach doesn't get surrounded by yes men, but it's also important that a GM doesn't have a relationship where he doesn't get, you know, a true feedback. I mean, uh, he needs to know what you think and I need to know what he thinks. If if we all tell each other what each other would like to hear, then you are, you are on the wrong path. You are on the wrong path. And um, this is, I think, uh, one, of the, one of the most sensitive points because in today's business with the unpredictability of the business, unless you really are comfortable with your own success and who you are as a coach, a lot of, a lot of times it happens that uh, you feel it or you see, we go back to scouting coaches like you were mentioning before, you see and you feel that sometimes you, like in any other situation in, in life, you get the answers that they think is the nicest answer for you to hear. But then you need to know if, you know, if that is the person that you're looking for. I mean, you want to have whoever is around you telling you what he thinks in, a, in a, the most honest way. Because again, uh, sharing is, means also to have a honest comparison of opinions. And, uh, and as you said, sometimes you can agree, some, Sometimes you disagree, but uh, that's how you grow. Uh, you cannot grow with uh, fake opinions because it doesn't lead you anywhere. It doesn't lead you anywhere.